Hello and welcome back to Skypothesis. We have a very unique build to share with you all today and we can't wait to get started. This is the Fell Alchemist. As always, we've drawn inspiration from a variety of sources in the world of entertainment to create a fresh and unique build for Vanilla Skyrim. It is our hope that this channel will inspire you to return to the game with a fresh perspective and a deeper roleplay experience. So without further ado, it's time to dive into our latest build, the Fell Alchemist. The Fell Alchemist is a master of stealth and alchemy. He approaches combat with a variety of distilled spider venom poisons. His enemies first notice an eerie still, then a sense of dread, followed by either a brutal blow from his poison-laced axe or a sudden onslaught of his spider minions. Whatever their way of death, it is swift and terrifying. The Fell Alchemist hails from Valenwood, and like all Wood Elves of the Forest, was raised to follow the Green Pact and not harm any plant life within their homeland. He was a lonely child and had difficulty making friends, not because of any lack of other Wood Elf youth around him, but because he was just a creep. He always had pet spiders, and always had one on him somewhere, in his hair, in his pockets, just anywhere. He was fascinated by them and considered them beautifully misunderstood creatures. He kept them in a hidden cave filled to the brim with jars. Over time, he learned the best methods to breed them, what sort of insects to capture for their food, and most importantly, how to harvest their venom. The Fell Alchemist plied his trade in the underground societies of assassins and cutthroats. The best would come to him for his unique alchemical concoctions made from potent, distilled spider venom. His customers were rough and calloused and accustomed to seeing death, but even they kept their visits as short as possible. There's only so long the toughest bandit can stand in a cave surrounded by the stench of pure death and the sight of a thousand terrifying arachnids. One day, a Nord showed up to buy poison, practically unheard of in these lands. The Nord looked around the cave and actually chuckled. You should see the ones we have in my homeland, he said. They're the size of a house. The Fell Alchemist was naturally smart, but uneducated as to the places outside of his little world. So just hearing of the giant spiders of the north was enough for him to pack up his things, set his spider farm free, and start heading north that very night. He simply had to study the giant frostbite spiders of Skyrim. When roleplaying as the Fell Alchemist, rule number one is to always remember that this creepy elf lives and breathes spider lore. The land is dotted with caves filled with frostbite spiders, and he seeks them out for study. Some notable places he could go to hang out with his creepy friends are Red Belly Mine, Harmugstall, and of course, Kronvanger Cave. Kronvanger Cave is the only dungeon to feature almost exclusively frostbite spiders, so naturally, the Fell Alchemist will love it. The Fell Alchemist is very experienced in dealing with spiders, so for the roleplay to make sense, you will need three key abilities to switch between to maintain your spider army. The first is the Wood Elf Racial Ability Command Animal. While it can only be used once a day, it has a wide radius and turns the spiders against other enemies. Use this ability exclusively when you are around spiders. The next ability is the shout Animal Allegiance, which functions similarly to Command Animal, just with a quicker cooldown. The third ability of the three is also the most important and powerful, the Ritual Stone. The Fell Alchemist loves and respects spiders, but also knows that they can be ferocious and difficult to tame. Undead spiders would be much easier to command. Because they remain with you for 200 seconds, then die waiting to be risen again, this can be super powerful. There is nothing more frightening than being charged by a swarm of frostbite spiders, but through the Fell Alchemist's ability to tame them, this becomes not only a possibility, but a powerful skill to be relied upon in open combat. Command Animal and the Ritual Stone have cooldowns of 24 hours, and Animal Allegiance has a cooldown of 70 seconds. Because they are all so integral to the Fell Alchemist's playstyle, we don't feel the least bit bad about using the Wait function to move a day ahead so that you can have access to these abilities again instantly. In doing this, you can indefinitely raise your arachnid army again and again to take down the toughest enemies. The Ritual Stone is seriously ridiculous. You can amass a massive army of frostbite spiders in hardly any time at all if you know where to find them. We recommend building up your army in the rift, as there are many frostbite spiders there out in the open. Note that you can fast travel with corpses raised by the ritual stone, but they will die upon arrival to your new destination. Waiting 24 hours and raising them again will allow you to bring your army anywhere. You'll be surprised at how fun this is. Enjoy the swarm. In terms of questlines, the Fell Alchemist will only follow the main quest until he meets Delphine. 
Once he understands his power as the Dragonborn, he frankly doesn't feel the need to help out the Blades. He will still investigate sources of power to learn new shouts, but his main focus will be in earning coin in the underground societies of Skyrim. After leaving Delphine, he will join the Thieves' Guild and Dark Brotherhood. He is accustomed to working with thieves and assassins when selling his poisons, so these questlines feel right at home for him. Aside from these mandatory questlines, we will leave it up to you whether or not you want to continue the main quest or start any other questlines. Whatever you think this creepy elf would want to do. Relevant side quests include the white file, repairing the file, a return to your roots, and finding insect jars. We recommend purchasing Winstad Manor and building the garden and fish hatchery to have a good place for growing ingredients and catching fish. Do not upgrade the home. The Fell Alchemist has no desire for a grand Nordic homestead. He will also purchase Severin Manor in Ravenrock because of its cool alchemy lab and spend a lot of time in White Ridge Barrow. For his weapon, we use a Forsworn Axe. Metals are rare in Valenwood, so most Bosmer use weapons made of bone, stone, or obsidian. Because of this, we believe that the Forsworn Axe has a very traditional Bosmer aesthetic to it, and seems a fitting weapon to deliver poisons with. You will also want to carry a longbow for the sole purpose of long-range poison delivery, especially used when fighting dragons. You will not perk archery. This is not a sneak archer build. Get up close and personal with your poison axe. The Fell Alchemist will also, of course, make extensive use of spider scrolls. These can be crafted in White Ridge Barrow using the Imbuing Chamber. They have a reputation of being notoriously difficult to craft, but with the right steps of preparation, it can be done. After retrieving all the stones of Baron Zaya, the perk Prowler's Prophet will provide you with a wealth of gems to use in the Imbuing Chamber, so many that you will never run out. To craft spider scrolls, you will also need albino spider pots. The difficult thing about obtaining these is that they generally do not respawn. There is, however, one location on Solstheim that does. Head near the Shrine of Kinnereth, just south of Bloodskull Barrow, and you will find a respawning pod. Duplication glitches can also be used to obtain more, but they are a little unreliable, so we recommend using the respawning pod method. Be frugal with your spiders, but don't be afraid to use them when needed. We've created a list of poisons that the Fell Alchemist will concoct, roleplayed as his special distilled spider venom. The first is Venom of the Funnel Web, which is a poison of damage health and paralysis made from Canis Root, Imp Stool, and Death Bell. When struck with this poison, your enemy is paralyzed, as if caught in a metaphorical web. Next up is Venom of the Widow, made from Deathbell, Giant Lycan, and Skeever Tail. This is a triple effect poison that applies Ravage Health, Damage Health, and Weakness to Poison. Applying this one first to tougher enemies makes them much easier to finish off. Next we have Venom of the Hobo, which is a poison of Slow and Damage Health made from Deathbell and River Betty. This is actually the most potent combination of damage health ingredients in the game. Use this poison to slow down fast approaching enemies. By the time they finally reach you, the fight will basically be won. Next is Venom of the Recluse, a lingering damage health poison made from Mora Tapinella and Slaughterfish Egg. This venom slowly spreads, opening a wound like an infected spider bite, rotting away the flesh. Use this one in tandem with Frostbite Venom to stack even more damage over time. This is especially useful against dragons since they spend so much time out of reach. Amplify its effect by first applying the Venom of the Widow. Finally, we have Venom of the Weaver, which is a neurotoxic Damage Magicka and Damage Magicka regen venom made from Butterfly Wing, Bear Claws, and Hanging Moss. Apply this with your bow to render mages helpless and force dragons to the ground. In addition to these deadly poisons, you will want to make as many potions of invisibility as possible. Ingredients include Nernroot, Vampire Dust, Luna Moth Wing, Ice Wraith Teeth, and Charis Eggs. Moving on to the Shouts category, the Fell Alchemist will use the Shouts Animal Allegiance to command spiders in combat, Dismay to show a realistic reaction to being stormed by a spider army, and Marked for Death to use in conjunction with your deadly poisons for quick assassinations. The perk Quiet Casting in the Illusion Tree will allow you to shout without making a sound and alerting enemies. When leveling the Fell Alchemist, you will want to perk Health and Stamina with a ratio of 2 points in Health for every 1 point of Stamina. The Stamina will be important for mobility, while the Health will help him survive in open combat when he doesn't have the advantage of Stealth and the element of Surprise. He is no slouch in open combat though. Through heavily perking one-handed and alchemy, his poison-laced axe will quickly sap the life out of anyone or anything. 
In one handed he will put all 5 in armsmen and 3 in hack and slash for extra bleeding damage over time to stack with his poisons. He will also perk fighting stance, savage strike, and critical charge. Critical charge can be combined with silent roll in the stealth tree for a rolling power attack if timed right. In smithing he will place 1 point in steel smithing in order to upgrade his forsworn axe. You can brew up a powerful potion of smithing in order to squeeze out even more damage. In Illusion, you will follow the tree from Novice Illusion up to Quiet Casting. The Fell Alchemist will not use Illusion spells, but Quiet Casting will be important for Silent Shouts and Spider Scrolls. Sneak will be heavily perked as well. Follow the entire outer spiral on the tree with all five points in Stealth, Muffled Movement, Light Foot, Silent Roll, Silence, and Shadow Warrior. On the inner spiral, take only Backstab, as it applies times 6 sneak damage to one-handed weapons. Deadly Aim and Assassin's Blade are not needed as the Fell Alchemist does not use daggers and only uses a bow to deliver poisons from a distance. Finally, in Alchemy you will perk the whole tree except for Experimenter, which is not needed because alchemy guides exist online and frankly, even if you don't personally know a certain recipe, you'd be sure that the Fell Alchemist would. So we don't feel bad looking them up. Concentrated Poison and Green Thumb are integral to getting the most out of your poisons, so be sure to grind up alchemy as quickly as you can. Alright, it's time once again for our favorite part of every build, the special moves. This is where we like to get creative with move combinations to create unique and super cool gameplay. The Fell Alchemist's first special move is Arachnophobia, which is a combination of Dismay and Jumping Spider Scrolls. Sneak into position, then use the shout Dismay. As enemies are fleeing in terror, unleash jumping spiders of any variety, flame, frost, poison, or shock, and watch as they terrorize your enemies. Up next we have Swarm, which is the combination of Ritual Stone Frostbite Spiders, Potion of Invisibility, and Venom of the Funnel Web, which is Poison of Paralysis. With your army of Frostbite Spiders close behind, pop a Potion of Invisibility to sneak behind enemy lines. Apply Venom of the Funnel Web to your bow, and as the enemy begins to notice the approaching group of spiders, hit them with a the poison. They will drop to the ground helpless as they are ravaged by your undead spider army. His final move is Fell Assassination. This terrifying move is done by combining a mind control spider with Marked for Death. After sneaking into position, you will first shout Marked for Death at your target. Then hit them with a mind control spider to pacify them. As they walk away from you, you can easily take care of them in their weakened state. This is super extra, but it's a totally terrifying way to assassinate someone. And with that, we are ready to end our most unique build yet. This time we set out to make a creepy wood elf who terrifies all who oppose him with his arachnid army. Through clever use of the ritual stone and powerful poisons, we believe that we have created an entirely unique, albeit creepy, Skyrim experience. We have plenty more builds planned, so if you like what we do, please like and subscribe to keep the magic of Skyrim alive. We'll see you next time, right here on Skypothesis.